Hello everyone, I'm Angela Ramsundo and uh, my short presentation today will be about promoting inclusivity in curriculum design and open educational resources. Given the time restraint that we have, um, I'll be going through certain points and I want you to reflect how you can implement that in uh, those principles, for example, in your curriculum design and open educational resources uh, materials. So for a start, I would say that, in fact, when we have to reflect about uh, education today, right, uh, we can say the foundation of modern education is uh, diversity and inclusion, right? It's very important to uh, bear in mind that uh, when we are uh, designing our curriculum, when we are uh, writing our open educational resources, we have to ensure that everyone feels valued, everyone feels respected, right? And uh, inclusion is about promoting belonging. It's about also motivating the learners to show that they feel they belong there, right? They belong to that space. And it is through curriculum design, it is through the OERs, we can make the students, the learners, feel that this is a space where they are included, right? And diversity, it means that we are involving different people, different uh, abilities, uh, different background, uh, different cultural background, different geographies, um, all kinds of individuals. So when we talk about curriculum design principles, right? We must also reflect that it goes beyond what we teach. It's not only about content, right? It is also about uh, equitable access and also acknowledging, celebrating diversity. So um, when we are designing the curriculum, right? Or even the OERs, I would suggest that we look at certain key principles for example, representation, diversity, accessibility, and relevance, of course, right? So I could say that they, they can help us to create learning experiences that can work for everyone. So um, curriculum materials must reflect diverse voices, uh, perspectives, and narratives. And uh, it's a little bit about representation right, uh, making sure that the curriculum, the OER, reflects a little bit the world around us with the different voices, the different narratives. And um, the importance of integrating multiple viewpoints and cultural contexts is so important, right, uh, especially if we have students from different cultural backgrounds, different geographies, different countries, and um, Diversity, is, it doesn't mean sticking to only one viewpoint, isn't it, right? Diversity is accepting, embracing, fostering, and also discussing the different kinds of ideas and cultural backgrounds within our curriculum. And um, when we talk of accessibility, right, we also have to reflect how can we remove the barriers to learning? How can we create equal opportunities to our students to engage in their studies, to participate fully, right? And uh, so that everyone can have their, their, their chance to success. And relevance, of course, it has to do with how we can make the learning meaningful, right? How we can connect what we are designing, what we are working on, what we are writing, to the students' real life experiences. And this is where we have to be aware of you know, the different, uh, different uh, cultural backgrounds of our students or prospective students, um, different geographies, you know, different life experiences, uh, different abilities and different identities. And I consider that when we are uh, designing curriculum or OERs, right? 
um, it's very important to address bias and stereotypes. Sometimes you are not aware that a material can have lots of stereotypes because we consider they, they are not relevant, but they can be relevant to one student or 10 students. So they, these are real things, right? Bias and stereotypes, and they can do real damage in a way to the learners if they feel that they are not uh, being included in the material or if the material is trying to demean their communities or their genders or their identities uh, or their or their countries right so it's very important that we identify and acknowledge biases in curriculum materials how do you do it by introspection first right reflection self-reflection about educators and we have to recognize the problem. It is through discussion, right? Addressing the biases. And when we address the biases, we are also evaluating the curriculum materials, right? So in a way, we are when we are looking into biases, we are evaluating the curriculum. We are making a kind of review of the materials to ensure there is inclusivity and diversity. So there is nothing that can perpetrate stereotypes, right? We have to scrub clean in a way the curriculum so that we we do as much as we can to ensure that our learners they feel they can be fully engaged in the material so when we're talking about accessibility and universal design right what i want to say is that we should ensure that there's a breaking down of barriers right because education is for everyone and when, for example, we are dealing with certain learners with certain disabilities, for example, right, or uh, learners trying to adjust to a new culture, we have to make sure that the curriculum is open to all, right? It is uh, flexible and adaptable to the learning experiences that cater to the diverse needs. So um, Universal designs comes in where uh, you can uh, promote a kind of flexibility, making sure that the students, they, uh, th they can adapt to the materials, right? And um, also a kind of co-creation that I will talk very shortly that is involved in, you know, in the design of the curriculum. So, uh, whether you're providing alternative formats, for example, assistive technologies or uh, different ways for students to engage, you are really acknowledging the uh, importance of the students, of the learners, right? All right, look, let's talk about culture now, right? And it's very important that when we are thinking of curriculum design, we show that we are responsive to the different cultural representations as far as possible, right? And making sure that our students, they can see themselves in what they are learning. So when we include diverse voice, voices and narratives, we are not just promoting diversity, but also nurturing a sense of belonging. And just forget about global citizenship, that is very important today, so that students, they feel that they are contributing to the world, that they are not marginalized groups, right? And they are we are also helping our students to feel that they are they have a place in the world now i suggest as well that when we are talking about the power of education to change life we should also kind of promote equity and justice in a way in our curriculum that is we can integrate topics for example social justice human rights in our curriculum this is where we are connecting with this idea of global citizenship and also uh, centering their experiences, right? Challenging existing power structures and also ensuring that our learners are connecting the materials with their own experiences, right? So we should integrate topics, empower marginalized learners, and we should remember education prepares our students to become agents of change. Thus, this is where the importance of collaboration and co-creation is so important. Right, and uh, it's important to involve the students. There should be co-creation, right? Collaborating with diverse stakeholders. And I would suggest then, 
I would suggest, I would suggest then that we understand, address, promote, collaborate and co-create. Thank you for listening to me.